What's up, everybody? Big Herc916, getting down fresh out. You know, we do it over here. I'm here with my man, AJ, uh, former law enforcement. And we were just, you know, having some really good conversations off camera that we thought we would want to share on camera. And one of the biggest things um, I think that needs to be talked about is having a dialogue that's not separated by race. And that's one of the biggest things that they are really pushing in America as a great divide. I mean, we've seen it the other day with the Super Bowl. You know, you got a a black national anthem, and then you got the national anthem. Then you got, you know, you got all these different things. And it's almost like we went backwards, in my opinion, as far as progress in America with um, just racial issues. And I'm all for like what Morgan Freeman said, you know, stop talking about it and uh, sitting down and having a, 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 a real conversation without the yelling, without the, the, you know, the race baiting, without, you know, we, we know that, of course, there has been things in this country's history that haven't been in the best of light. But, you know, we could say that about multiple countries. I mean, there's African countries where everybody's black and, you know, they kidnap kids and they slaughter and they, you know, cut off arms. They do all this. I mean, there's a lot of different places. Um, you know, Libya, they've got slavery going on right now. I mean, there's there's things going on all over the world. But to fix a problem, you have to talk about it and, and we, we have to create a dialogue. And I didn't grow up with a, a, a racial like outlook on life as far as, you know, hatred towards one particular group or another. You know, I grew up military background. Um, my grandfather he told me stories about how he experienced certain situations, um, you know, on base where he, there was, you know, some discrimination, but he never used it as a negative to make excuses for not working hard and being successful. And so I learned that no matter what somebody did to you, as far as what they um, had as viewpoints or how they looked at certain things, it was not excuse to not perform at your highest level. And so AJ, you know, um, you know, growing up here, out here in Mesa, you know, being from Arizona, um, having worked in law enforcement, you know, a lot of people, when I moved out to Arizona, they're like, Oh man, big hurt. You better watch out, man. You got a lot of dudes out there. They got guns. They drive big trucks. They got the American flag. All of that's and, true. Yeah. You know, everything so, you just said is true. You know, be careful. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, whatever. But I, I, I don't, that doesn't, you know, it doesn't bother me because I've, I've never looked at race, you know, even though, you know, you see it, but I talk to everybody, and, you mm -hmm. know, I'm, I've been, I've always been a communicator. So for you, I mean, how was it growing up? I mean, were there a lot of cultural diversity or even in law enforcement, were there situations where you seeing that race played an issue? I mean, what have been your experiences? That's an interesting question. I've never actually been asked this before. I grew up in Northeast Mesa, Arizona which is the whitest white place on the planet. There was zero cultural diversity. Mm. Um, but at the same, I grew up my, I grew up in a split household. Um, my dad, the man who I call my dad with my stepdad, he was law enforcement as well. And he was the greatest human being on the planet. And there was not a word of divide of race that ever came out of his mouth. And so growing up, and then I, and then I grew up, uh, my, <clears throat> my biological father lived just a short ways away. And again, he was very open-minded as well. He grew up, my biological father grew up in California, big family, lots of diversity as far as going over to California a lot. Uh, high school years and all that good stuff. When I say everything was segregated, I don't mean it was segregated. What I mean is, is that everybody kind of hung out with themselves. I grew up in that time period where the skaters were the skaters, mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. the uh, country guys were the country guys, you know, the stoners were the stoners, mm -hmm. the jocks were the jocks. So everybody just kind of stayed in their own little lanes. And in high school, I really had a diverse population, uh, diverse because I was friends with everybody. I, I don't, I, I've, when I, when I, this is the dumbest saying that I think people say, but I really mean it is I don't give a shit that you're a different color than me. I don't. When I went into the military was the first time that I had ever experienced any kind of racial divide. And it was actually when a black E7, I was going in for testing to, to test for E5. I was in E4, I was going to test for E5. I was in the Air Force. Um, a, we're walking in and a black E7 
handed the kid in front of me, who was an E4, I shouldn't say kid, we're in our 20s, handed him the answers to the test, and the kid was also black. He handed it to him right in front of me. And I looked at him, and he looked at me, and he just, and he walked away. I was like, okay, that was interesting. That's actually the first instance that I could ever think of where there was a racial divide. I did grow up with a lot of Hispanic, uh, just because of here in the, in the, metropolitan area 35 years ago it was a large uh, hispanic uh, population due to immigrant farms or farms coming for the or immigrants coming for the farming community and like where we're standing here right now or sitting here right now it used to all be farm fields when i was growing up so there was really no cultural divide there really was i mean there was there was no culture it was all white but i just grew up in a household that we had open dialogue we had open conversation we talked about this i saw what my dad was doing as far as the law enforcement side of the house and he wasn't talking about you know, Hispanic this, black person that, white person this. He was talking about drugs, meth, and kids and helping those communities and getting the drugs out of those communities. And again, it, the, color didn't, the color didn't matter. Moving into, out of the military, I went straight from the military into law enforcement. And it was just learning the laws and how to, how to apply the law equally across all across all races i didn't it, it was my job to have a discretion whether to arrest or not arrest but it wasn't my job to to say well i'm gonna arrest this person because they're black i'm gonna arrest this person because they're white it was my job to say okay did they violate a law okay i'm gonna make an arrest or i'm gonna write a ticket or whatever the case may be i did have a lot more cultural diversity in law enforcement because i was policing in a, and again arizona is predominantly not predominantly but has a large hispanic population so we're a border state. The type of uh, the type of uh, work I did was particularly criminal interdiction. That has to do with drug smuggling, human smuggling, gun smuggling, money laundering, identi identity theft. Um, in a predominantly Hispanic culture or his, his, uh, Hispanic area where I worked, eighty percent of my traffic stops were on Hispanics. So it wasn't that I was racially profiling or racially targeting. It's that if I'm working criminal interdiction. And 80% of that stuff comes from the border, from Mexico. What am I going to be pulling over? Yeah. I'm going to be pulling over Hispanics. If I, if I work up in North Phoenix or North Scottsdale, it's a predominantly white neighborhood. All of your traffic stops are going to be white people. So it, it's, I never really ever, I, I just, I have a hard time formulating even into words because I never felt that way. I never thought that way. I never, you know what I mean? I just, that's just not the way I ever, I can tell you that my, the, the diversity was low in my personal life in my, you know, but again, mm -hmm. I never really cared. About. What do you, what do you think um, is one of the biggest uh, issues dividing America with this whole racial divide thing? I mean, does it appear from your perspective that it's been politically incentivized and that it's, it's, it's become more prominent in the last, like, I would say five to seven years, because I mean, in my twenties and thirties, I mean, I'd never really, I never really heard this much racial, you know, conversation as far as in, in a, in a negative sense in like social media, well, it didn't have social media back then, but in the news and stuff, but right. now it's like, you know, every other thing. If it doesn't have a racial narrative, it gets no attention, you know? So if it's a racial narrative that can be exploited, it's on every network, man. And for me, I, I feel like having these type of conversations, you know, former law enforcement, ex-criminal, I mean, you know, you come from Arizona, me coming from Cali, these are the con type of conversations that we need to have and we need to air out the dirty laundry. Absolutely. If there's somebody who, you know, and I, I, you know, I tell people all the time, like, oh, is that person racist? Okay, they're an idiot. It could be, you, you know, and black people could be racist too. You know, I have black people all, you know, you're, you know, you could be racist too. You, you say certain things, don't think because you say it, you get a pass, but this person says it and they don't get a pass. At the end of the day, you're both idiots. Yep. You know, and I'm like, I, I, you can't change certain people. So I don't try to change anybody. I'm just trying to, the people who are, somewhat have a, a, a sensible uh, mentality that I can talk with, I would like to have a conversation, but I'm not here. If you don't like me, then who cares? Right. You know what I mean? I'm not stuck in a, in a, in a, in a, in a jail situation where I have to look at you every day. So who cares? But people get so, oh man, that guy, 
he he had this on. He's I mean, like, so what? I mean, dude, I, I went over here and I seen these dudes jumping on each other. I mean, dude, they were just as bad. So it's like you can't really point the finger at one particular group to say one's worse than the other. But my thing is, the more we talk and share, the the the, the better we can have our relationships here because we, we, we live together, man. And I don't, you know, I don't want to see things torn apart. I think, you know, for one, like um, being able to have, uh, whether it's group prayer, meditation, whatever you want to call it, you know, that was one of the greatest things you, you had when you, you know, whether it's football in the locker room mm-hmm. or in school or even saying, you know, the Pledge of Allegiance, you know, you could say, oh, man, but the flag. Look, man, I'm talking about just Pledge of Allegiance. If you're in my class, we're together, man. I'm not going to let nobody beat you up. You don't let nobody beat me up. Right. We're brothers, man. Amen. It does, I'm not looking at you. Oh, you're white. You said Pledge of Allegiance. It was different for you than it was for my family. Man, get rid of that bullshit. Right. But we, we need to have these conversations, and they don't want to have these conversations because they always pick people who've never been through anything to have the arguments rather than um, somebody who can intelligently speak about having firsthand experiences. I think several things. One, it comes down to a lack of exposure. I, there, there is something to be said for somebody who's never grown up around, if you're around all black people, all white people, all Hispanic people, and then all of a sudden you're integrated into something. There is a moment of, are they like me? Mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. if you just talk and understand we're the same freaking thing. That's right. It, it's like, there is, I mean, we, we can't, you know, give up, or we can't forget the fact that you know, 100,000 years ago, we were extremely tribal and grunted at each other, and we had to protect this tribe from that tribe because that tribe might attack us. That's in right, the case that's right. Maybe. I mean, we still have civil wars going on now. Yeah. Um, but again, in a society as advanced today with as much as we have, again, we, we can all speak the same language and we can all just communicate and talk. And I absolutely positively do 100% agree that it is being politicized. I think that these morons that fly whatever flag other than the United States flag they don't and I'm not talking about um, uh, I'm talking about like the pro-Palestinian or pro this or pro that I'm not talking about uh, LGBTQ or anything like that what I'm saying is is that they don't comprehend the reason you can fly those flags is because it's under the color of the American flag that's right that's right it's because the American flag in the US Constitution gives us the ability to believe different things, speak different things, and not kill each other. And not and you're not going to be arrested because you support this or you support that. We may disagree, but you have the ability and the power to do that because it's under one nation, the American flag. So it's within our own selves that we create this tribalism. It's within our own selves, and it's the, the fear of the unknown. I think it has a lot to do with the fear of the unknown. Well, just be, I've never seen somebody that looks like that. How, you know, well, you're exactly right on exposure. Cause I know as a a young person, you know, I I lived on military base for a little while, but then moving into different communities and from military base to moving to to back to Sacramento, then moving to Huntington beach and, and then seeing like, you know, the beachy community with surfers and Mm -hmm. skaters and, you know, going from, from the hood to that. It's like, it is a culture shock, but it was an experience that looking back on, I'm glad I had because it exposed me to something that later on in life allowed me to now be able to have conversations with a multitude of different people. And I think that's one of the biggest things. And I think, you know, I'm not really a person who says, oh, you need to go to college to get education. But for the cultural aspect, I think it's great because you're interacting with other people Agreed. from other places. And not everybody has the same viewpoints, which having conversations, these are the conversations that we need to have. It's not about, you know, now you have people, they're, you know, you, you see, these, you see these, these, these forums and where they have on these campuses. And instead of talking like how we're talking, you know, somebody gets on the mic, and, ah, they're yelling, right. you know, barking and me out, just doing stupid shit. Like, you know, this is, I don't care. Yeah. And it's like, dude, why are you even talking it? Just leave. You know, if you're not here to, to try to understand so we can work out a mutual um, uh, relationship that's mm-hmm. going to be beneficial, then you shouldn't even be here. But I think, like you said, um, the exposure and the more you talk to people outside of your norm, um, 
the better you become as a human being in the communicator. And one of the things I, I, I always used to do is I try to find like if I'm in a in a gym or I'm at like somewhere a uh, restaurant, I try to find the most unlikely person I could talk to. And I try to see if I can give them to talk. I said, hey, man, you got the new Jordans on. Oh, yeah, man, these are cool. Or, hey, man, is that a is that a uh, Rolex or is that a Hublot? Oh, yeah, man, I just got this. I try to find something to give somebody a reason to feel good yeah. and to communicate. And that might be all I said, but at least they know, well, man, that black guy came up to me and complimented me on my watch or he seen my shoes or, hey, man, I had this Letterman jacket on. But those are the things I do to challenge myself. Yeah, yeah. And I think people need to challenge themselves more. And it doesn't have to be a negative. It could be a positive, but that's how we, we open up. I, I absolutely positively respect the person's right to get up and open their mouth and make themselves sound like a moron. If they want to get up and spew hatred and just start calling people names and all that good stuff, they're doing nothing to further communication. They're not even listening. They're just talking. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I, I respect that, again, because I believe in free speech, um, that's their right to sound like a moron. Yeah. But if you want to come and talk and have a conversation, then let's sit down and have a conversation. Let's talk. Let's, okay, you could call me a, a whatever, a racist, a misogynist, but why are you saying that? Okay, well, then once we have a conversation and discuss things, then you can understand that, oh, no, you're just, you're just being an asshole. Yeah, I agree. Hey, man, don't be afraid to get out your comfort zone. There you have it. Big Kirk 916 and AJ.